Okay, so if you watched my video on uh, auction find or whatever the heck I tell you, titled that thing, um, this was one of the things that I got several of little BK Precision eight model eighteen oh three frequency counters. Um, I actually want to keep probably at least two of them because I actually kind of like them. They're battery powered. Uh, they're not you know don't power off the wall power either a wall wart at nine volts. There's a plug in the back to hook up nine volts or an internal battery pack. Something I've never seen a battery powered you know mini frequency counter, uh, hundred megahertz. Um, it has a also has built in low pass filter. Um, goes from 5 hertz to 100 megahertz. So, you know, if you work on radios, hell, that's great. So, I mean, I might actually at some point in time might need that feature. Uh, it, as you watch, you'll see the, fre the frequency going up a little bit. Now, I've actually, I don't want to say fixed that, but I've sped it up um, how fast it takes this thing to warm up. Because the first thing I noticed when I powered one up and I hooked it up to a signal generator, when this was cold... Holy horse hockey, did it ever take a long time? <laughs> I mean, we're talking on the order of a half hour, and it drifted up. I, I just stopped looking at it. It was well well over 300 hertz. It had uh, increased in that time frame. And the reason is there is no temperature compensation. There's no uh, crystal oven. It just has a crystal stuck on a circuit board. So as this unit warms up, the frequency is going to change. Um, now, and... You know, if it had a 10 megahertz oscillator crystal, that would be easy, or even some of the other, you know, standard frequencies, one, maybe five meg, something like that. I could just get a, you know, a off-the-shelf, you know, oscillator, you know, temperature-compensated crystal oscillator, you know, like a TCXO or something, and modify it and stick it in here. But, yeah, this thing uses some oddball frequency. It was like 2.9, I know that, but the rest of it was... But it's all digits. It's not zero. It was something like 2.915323 or some oddball frequency like that. I mean, it had digits the whole way down to one hertz, you know, that weren't zeros. Um, some really arcane frequency that they're using for the crystal. So I can't take a, an oscillator, you know, a, a temperature compensated, you know, one off the shelf for an oscillator or something and stick in there. But I wanted to try and speed up that heat up time. Now... They have, this operates off of 9 volts, but it has a five, uh, 7805 voltage regulator in it. So, I, you know, and it's, you know, crystals here, regulators here, mounted flat down to the board. And, I, you know, light bulb went off in the head. And actually, you can see, it looks like it's starting to stabilize. And I haven't, I haven't had it on that long now. And I'm operating off of batteries that are, they're not dead, but they're damn close to it. Um, I think it's well below 7 volts now, what it's that battery pack's putting out. But I thought... We know that that 7805. It's not really. It doesn't need that much heat sinking because this thing operates at nine volts. So it's not like I got a 7805 that I'm pumping 20 volts into it and it needs to regulate it down to five volts. You know, it's operating at a maximum of about nine volts. You know, somewhere around about there. So I mounted it to the crystal. So get the cover popped off here. I've got the screws out of it. So you can see I'm operating off a battery pack. I've got some nickel metal hydride double A's in there. And that's, this is the battery pack that was in it from the factory. It says a 9-volt snap connector on the end of it. And then it has a jack on the back if you wanted to operate it off of uh, external, which is what the college did, I assume, that this was in. Because all of the equipment like this has holes drilled in the top where they apparently had it, uh, you know, attached to the underside of shelves. So what I have done, and I'll take this clamp off because I'm actually waiting for my adhesive to uh, stay, you know, dry or, you know, set up. Um, you can see where the regulator originally was, right there, okay? And it was attached. It was no heat sink compound, nothing. They just had this heat sink sitting on the circuit board. The regulator pins went down in there and a screw through there. So, like I say, it doesn't really get that hot. So I got, you know the bright idea. Well, hell, if I just glue it to the crystal, I'll use the crystal as the heat sink, and, you know, at the same time, it's warming the crystal and helping to stabilize the temperature and heat it up faster, so it reduces my time, my warm-up time. So, you can see the only thing that I've done, I took a thermo pad, because I didn't want to put the, you know, the tab here touching the metal, so I actually stuck a thermo pad in there, and what the white stuff is, is 
thermal adhesive. It's basically like silicone, but it's actually a thermal tra heat transfer adhesive. I use that for gluing heat sinks onto the top of ICs. Um, works great for stuff like this. Uh, or if you're working on like President or Unit in HR 2510s and Lincolns and whatnot on the main processor board where they have the voltage regulators on there glued down. When you clean all that corrosive glue off, this is what I use to glue them back down because it's a heat transfer adhesive. But, uh, yeah, so, and yeah, it's starting to set up. That's the only thing about this stuff. It takes forever. I mean, we're talking like a day or more for this stuff to finally set up. It dries really, really, really slow. Because uh, it's not silicone. It just has that consistency, though. But So that's what I did. I stuck that on there. I, got, I still need to heat shrink the uh, little pieces of chunks of heat shrink tubing I stuck on there. But it seems to work fine. I didn't want to finalize anything until I made sure that this wasn't going to get blazing hot. and you know. So it was kind of a trial. And I hooked it up. And like I say, right now this battery pack's putting out a little bit less than 7 volts because the batteries do need to be recharged. But... Uh, I had this hooked up to the 9 volt uh, you know, bench power supply through the jack here. And yeah, it, it, the highest temperature I saw was 132, 133 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. So that's perfectly fine for that regulator. It's not going to hurt it. And that was running at you know, 9 volts. Um, if I'm going to act, because I'm not going to be using this on the bench, so I'm not going to be using that jack. If I ever want to actually use this, it's going to be in a mobile application, you know, out in the field so I would be using batteries anyhow so that's perfectly fine but yeah like I say that has a that seems to have really sped up the uh, the warm-up process I'm trying to get these things back together on camera I need five hands to try and line up all the slots Ooh, I think I got it nope just the one back corner here I always hate these blasted sliding panels. <laughs> you get one corner in and the other one pops out. Okay. There. But, uh, so, you know, that was, that's my answer to, uh, speeding the warm-up time up. And, yeah, and you can see me having the cover off, it cooled down. Because all that nice warmth and heat that was trapped inside of this has now escaped and the frequency has dropped back down. So it's no longer at 10 megahertz, but uh, yeah, like I say, it doesn't help. The batteries are about dead. So it d and the lower that battery pack voltage gets, the slower that crystal is you know is going to be to heat up. But if you run it off of nine volts, you know, off the the rear jack, yeah, it's I'd I'd say two minutes probably. Yeah, I'd say at about two minutes it's stabilized versus a half hour. So yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. So yeah, I think that's a nice little counter. It's not going to be super accurate. I'm not going to be using it for you know one hertz resolution or anything. But uh, once this thing stabilizes, it'll be fine for working on stuff like CB radios. You know, especially if I want to just pull this thing out, take an RF sample port with me to be able to hook this up to check somebody's radio. Let's say so I can take an RF you know sample port along tap that in line with whatever radio I want to check, hook a frequency, you know, run a BNC cable over to the frequency counter, yep, you're, you know, 190 hertz off, off frequency, or, you know, you're a thousand hertz off or something. This would be perfect, and it's portable. So, there you go, there's just uh, my answer to the extremely slow warm-up time of this. Just pull the regulator off, take the heat sink out, and attach the... Uh, 7805 regulator directly to the crystal body, attach it with a, you know, a, either a mica insulator, or in my case I used a little thermo pads, and actually a, adhere it to it with a little bit of a heat transfer adhesive, and that seems to, you know, really speed it up. So there you go, the BK1803 with a, uh, I guess you could almost call it a crystal oven modification, you know, somewhat. <laughs>